Anil to first address you. Thank you very much, your fan, members of the media. Good afternoon. You are all aware of the orders made by the Honorable Chief Justice yesterday afternoon. A copy of that order was, you would have heard rather, that the Chief Justice said in her ruling that service on council would constitute service of the order on all the parties. Yesterday afternoon, I was served with a copy of the order and I am informed that Mr. Boston and his office were served with a copy of the order and I was also informed by the Marshal of the High Court that the chairperson of GCOM was served with a copy of the order. I, I saw subsequently a statement from GCOM acknowledging that the chairperson received the order. In terms of Mr. Mingo, a service, a, a ser service of the order on Mr. Boston would constitute service of the order on Mingo and Mr. Lowenfield. So the question of service of the order cannot arise. Notwithstanding, you saw this morning, the order prescribes that the process under Section 84 should have commenced not later than 11 a.m. The order, the section says, as you know by now, that there must be an ascertainment and adding up of the votes cast in respect of each list of candidates using the statements of poll and that in the presence of the party's representatives as set out in Section 86 of the Act. Section 86 provides that counting agents of parties as well as candidates to poll or what the law described as duly appointed candidates should be allowed to be part of this exercise. At 11, way after 11 a.m., in fact, now is something to five, and the process has not yet commenced. My instructions are that there was an attempt at about 11 thereabouts to start the process, but the RO came with a pre-prepared spreadsheet and attempted to use that as the basis for the ascertainment and adding up of the uh, statements of, of, of the votes. Now, as I keep repeating, if Parliament wanted a substitute to be used, Parliament would have said the statements of poll or any other document or mechanism appointed or approved by the returning officer in the exercise of his discretion. Those, that facility, that option, is not in the legislation. We have cited case law authorities to the court to show that the legislation is so strict that the RO cannot delegate his function in, 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 in the act. That is why the Chief Justice was able to vacate the previous declaration because the RO said in his own affidavit that a Miss Miller did it for him and not him. And we have cases coming out of India and Africa where similar things were done, where the RO delegated his function to be performed by assistance, and that was found to be unlawful, and that is why the Chief Justice vacated the declarations he made, because he did not do it in accordance with the Act. In that instance, he didn't do it um, personally. Another component of the requirement is that he must use the statements of poll. He refuses to do so. If one wants to use a spreadsheet, you can't use a spreadsheet to defeat the purpose of the legislation. Why did the law say, or why does the law say, that you must use the statements of poll in the presence of the parties? It is because it's a public exercise and there must be a balancing off 
of statements of Paul in the possession of the arrow and statements of Paul in the possession of the of the um, uh, uh, of the parties, and it is that exchange which must occur, and it must be consistent that will lead to the ascertainment and adding up. You cannot bring into the room a pre prepared document. No one saw you ex extract information from the statements of Paul and put it on that document. If you want to use a document, you must explain to the people in the room who are entitled to be there how you arrive at the information on that spreadsheet. That is not being done because it cannot be done. It is clear that the PPP has won the elections, and, and their father will speak that. about that later, and the APNU has lost, and they now are trying to do everything within their power to frustrate the exercise. So, uh, you would have known by now that I served contempt of court and notice to, to, of an intention to institute contempt of court uh, proceedings against Mr. Mingo, that letter was sent to him and was copied to all the commissioners and the chairperson because I believe that enough evidence would be able to assemble to show some form of acting in concert. Because I don't think Mr. Mingo is acting in isolation. In fact, as I speak now, contempt of court proceedings are being filed. The other issue that I want to speak about is the chair is a a press statement issued by Ms. Yolanda Ward, which seems to suggest that the process will be aborted until tomorrow by the, by the chairperson because the chairperson desires to read the written judgment of a court. I issued another statement in response to that. An order, when a case is concluded, it is the order of the court that binds the parties not the written judgment. The written judgment is simply a chronology of the thinking of the judge as the judge arrived at the orders. You have some things that are called obita dicta, meaning things that are said by the way, which are not part of the legal reasoning of the judge. So to claim that one needs to read the judgment, the written judgment, in order to obey the order of the court is quite farcical and fanciful. And this is done by a judge of 30 years standing. Is orders that are served. Anytime a marshal is required to serve an order of court and anytime contempt of court proceedings are filed, they are filed to enforce orders of court, not written judgment. Written judgment normally sometimes comes years after a case is concluded. So this, this desire expressed by the, the chairperson of the commission, in my view, is quite sinister. There is the chief justice order is written in clear, unambiguous, and unequivocal language. All of you read it. All of you understood what it says, except a judge of 30-some 30, 30 years standing. It is too much for persons not to draw adverse conclusions. And legally, there is a time frame within which this entire exercise has to be concluded. And that time frame is running out. It is running out. So I will stop here at this point in time and, and we'll, we'll revert back to you at some a later stage. Yeah, I, I'll ask uh, our executive secretary and chief election agent to give you uh, some additional information on what took place this morning, and he was in the initial meeting where the methodology was supposed to be de de uh, developed. As you know, we were there this morning and we were denied entry uh, uh, early this morning. So I'll ask uh, Zulfika and Mustafa to address you. Just um, to add what uh, my colleague, Mr. Nanlal, have said, this morning I think the RO went with a preconceived idea that he will use the spreadsheet, because he invited representatives from all the political parties that were there with, a intention, with the intention that we will discuss the modalities, how this event today will take place. When we went there, he was picking and choosing observers 
this was very strange that look only one observer from this group will have to go in another observer from this group although all of those observers were accredited prior before the elections you have a number of local observers that were accredited before the elections but he this morning limited the presence of these observers so that was the first thing then he went on to the party he did not start any discussion although as the parties as the PVP elections agent, I went there to discuss, as I said, the modality because we have other persons, technical persons, who would have gone there to do the tabulation. He took our name and he said that one representative will be allowed for party to go into the room. For what? To do the start the process. Listen to him, uh, listen, uh, or listen to the announcement from the spreadsheet. I found it very strange and I said, no, this can't happen because he's saying that he has the power. He has the power that was granted by the judge to determine how this exercise will take place. I had to remind him that he had, he had to comply with 84-1 that Mr. Nandalal mentioned just now. And he accepted it. But by then, he did not want us to go into the room. He wanted us to identify a name from the party who will be in the room to sit down to do the tabulation. So I had, I had to identify a person. Um, that person went there and she went into the room. And then the whole process of the spreadsheet came back again. But it seems to me, well, from report I received, that that was the same spreadsheet he used when he did the declaration on the stairs in that building. The same very spreadsheet he used. So it was a, 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 a process, a redundant process, so to speak, right? A process he, just for um, f um, formality, just for formality to certify that he's going back to do a declaration. So that, was, that took place this morning. After objection by our agents and other persons that were there and observers, the process was halted. Mr. Nandalal explained just now about the press statement that came out from GCOM. And then they suspend it now, I understood, until tomorrow at 9. Because it, um, the, the, chair, the chairperson, she wants now to read the entire judgment of the um, written judgment of the um, Chief Justice. So it seems, as Mr. Nandalal rightly said, they are now playing with time. Time moving, and we are against time. And, and all those things that they are, they are doing, they are doing it just to frustrate the process frustrate the people them around um, the, the observers. But I want to also mention a very, very important point that was raised, I, understood, uh, I, I heard yesterday, that the DCU, the Deputy Chief Election Officer, said that spreadsheets were used in the nine other regions. Spreadsheets were, were, were indeed used, but how it was used? This process was explained by Mr. Nandalal that the SOPs from GCOM and the SOPs from the party were used, and they had blank spreadsheet. When the figure was called, the party agent writing, it, um, writing in the numbers on the spreadsheet. That was the exercise. Okay. Not a spreadsheet with numbers there that he came in, a preconceived I, um, uh, 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 a spreadsheet that was written out somewhere else, and the sources of information came from some, some other documents. So that is all I want to mention. I just want to say that uh, in all the areas, the, the SOPs were used to derive uh, the, source. The, 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 the tabulation of the votes in those regions. Uh, I, we have two of our candidates who are in uh, two separate regions that observe this process with the arrow. I'll ask them to address you. But before that, I'll ask our Prime Minister candidate to respond to uh, some Facebook uh, posts by various uh, individuals in the uh, coalition. One is James Bond, uh, the second is, well, we responded to Moses Nagamutu yesterday. So, uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Yifan Ali. Members of the media, i just like to add my voice from a security standpoint to say that the comments by former Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, and now today we have James Bond making his comments. We consider those comments to be irresponsible at this stage. The PPPC is committed to a peaceful process. From the time we started our campaign, 
We communicate that to all Guyanese. We committed to a peaceful process. We are interested in peaceful elections. And whoever win at the end of this process, so be it. Of course, the process must be in keeping with the laws of Guyana. At no time did we or do we intend to have our supporters throughout Guyana organized for any violence. And Mr. Bond's statement that the PPP supporters in Barbies are presently being organized to be transported to town for violence is an irresponsible statement because that will not happen under our watch. Our supporters have a duty to be communicated to through the media, and as you'll notice, our leadership has been doing that. Last evening, the General Secretary took the opportunity of the visit, after the visit of the um, Prime Ministers, to speak to the media. And today we are speaking to the media. And we would like you to communicate clearly through the length and breadth of Guyana that the PPPC is committed to a peaceful end of this electoral process and at no time will we be organizing our supporters to commit any acts of violence in Guyana. Comrade uh, Gail Teixeira would address you. On the, on the issue of the statement by Roxanne Myers, my experience in Region 7, I was a supernumerary agent for Region 7 and on Wednesday evening our counting agent and were in, was invited to the RO's office in Bartica. The RO insisted that they had written up on the board, on the wall, the statements of poll, and we refused to deal with that. We said we had to go to the SOPs. We were not dealing with anything written on the board, which was already written up, already written up. We said, absolutely not. He tried to use his spreadsheet. We said, no. And after about 45 minutes of arguing, both when I was put out the place and the counting agent continued, that eventually it was insisted that he call Lowenfield. Lowenfield then instructed him that he must go back to the SOPs. And the process started all over again. We started from fresh all over again, going through every statement of poll until the 82 polling stations and poll statements were finished. And in the process, a clerk was typing in the amounts as they were read. They were checked and verified to make sure they reflected our records. And then there was, that document was signed. So that Ms. Myers is grossly misinforming um, the public on this issue. I must say to the APNU persons who came to the count had no SOPs. They were not interested in the SOPs they had apparently come to approve this spreadsheet. And they sat there for three hours doing nothing. Thank you. Uh, just before, uh, let's ask uh, Priya, you can address from Region 3. Specifically in Region 3, because I see Region 3 being used as an example. I was physically present um, and uh, at the counting of the, the tabulation of the SOPs. So were several observers who I saw making copious notes. So I would expect that inquiring minds would ask those observer groups what they saw. And what they saw was the arrow holding up SOPs, reading out how many voters were on the list, how many people came, and what each party got, and the PPPC comparing their SOPs. And we had absolutely no problems with that. On the night, on this night of the second, the APNU um, AFC representatives turned up and they asked for a spreadsheet. So now the whole story is becoming very clear to me. They said they were tired and they were unable to go through SOP to SOP, and they wanted something more convenient. And far be it for me to stop anybody who might be tired or lazy. Uh, if you want an easy way, go, go through the easy way. So a spreadsheet, it, the, that count, that tabulation was adjourned to the next day, and a spreadsheet was prepared. They came, and the RO began to use the numbers from the SOP, which is what the PPPC um, delegation was 
tabulating by as well as the RO. The AP and U representatives went through seven boxes, said they were tired, and got up and left the process. So in Region 3, in the presence of all the observers, both foreign and local, who were there for the entire period, what we used were SOP to SOP. The spreadsheet that was prepared had errors on it, but in my considered view, there were not deliberate errors like we're seeing in Region 4. There were errors where the total was askew because a number went into a different column in a couple of instances. Every party was affected in those cases. But the SOPs were used to correct that. And the, the tabulation and the board, um, the thing on the screen and the actual uh, spreadsheet was actually corrected as per what was on the SOP. So I want to be very clear. I see different APNU candidates um, actually saying in as many words that a tab uh, spreadsheet was used in Region 3. It was not. They were not present. Nobody has them recorded as present. I believe there were newsroom people as well as the Guyana Chronicle people when press persons when the results were announced and they would be able to verify that also. I also wanted quickly to point out that, okay. Uh, Joe, you want to add? Mm. All right. So I just want to go through quickly. Allow me, sorry, is that one thing having got three of The EU are present in our, in, in our uh, verification process. What is interesting now that is a pattern um, is that when the whole argument took place in Region 7 to return to... Oh, oh, sorry. I thought my voice is big enough, but maybe not. No? no, I just wanted to add to the issue of a pattern. When, after the arguments, we, we were able to return to the SOPs, going one by one, the process had to be suspended for the RO to go and get the SOPs. He didn't have them on him. He had to go get them, and they had to break for about half an hour to file them and sort them before we could start, the, the counting agent and the representative could start going through the SOPs. So what I'm saying is what you're seeing is a pattern that was taking place with the spreadsheet that the objective somewhere along the line was never to use the SOPs, but to go to the spreadsheet. And, and I can only give from the experience of the RO in Bartica that he didn't expect to have opened the packages with the SOPs that had come in from all over the region, Upper Maz, Mid Maz, Kayuni, and Bartika. When we demanded that and we insisted that he get instructions from Lowen Field, who we knew GCOM had made a decision that day to use the SOPs, to insist that the SOPs be used, only then did he comply. And he had to then, he was totally unprepared. He had to sort everything all over again. And so I just want to make that point that there's a pattern emerging. And that was a process in all the other nine regions, yeah. except Region 4. And yeah. observers that what, an, an observer, what present. Priyan and Gail explained just now. Yeah. So members of the media, uh, you know, we have made it very clear that we have our numbers, and our numbers would have showed clearly that the People's Progressive Party Civic would have won these elections. I just want to go through, uh, first of all, let me say that GCOM has now published uh, the results for ni nine districts because four has been uh, void, right? Right, so for the nine districts, their results are what I will, I will uh, announce to you, which is uh, consistent with our result region, and then I'll give you for district four. So in our records, uh, region one, and this also adds up to what was published. We have um, ANOG in region one. I think ANOG did not contest, but they have zero. APNU, 3,905. LJP, 222. PPP, 8,022. PRP, 17. TN, uh, URP, nine. Region two, ANOG, 82. APNU 7,343, Change Guyana 146, LJP 115, PPP 18,788, P 
PRP 47, URP 71. Region 3, APNU 23,811, Change Guyana 316, PPP 47,855, PRP 133, TCJ 78, TNM 55, URP 41. Then we have the, George, the, the District 4 results. ANU Anog 1,406, APNU 116,950, Change Guyana 922, LJP 739, PPP 80,887, PRP 378, TCJ 461, TNM 138, URP 102. District 5 or Region 5, Anog 87, APNU 14,497, Change Guyana 97, PPP 18,317, PRP 50, TCJ 22, TNM 10, URP 19. Region 6 or District 6, Anog 159, APNU 20,388, Change Guyana 258, PPP 43,275, PRP 165, TCJ 57, TNM 16, URP 50. Region number 7, ANU Anok 40, APNU 4,817, Change Guyana 49, LJP 396, PPP 3,720, URP 18. Region 8, APNU 2,086, LJP 419, PPP 2,041, TNM 11, URP 2. Region 9, APNU 4,889, LJP 163, PPP 7,068, sorry, PRP 57, URP 13. Region 10, Anog 171, APNU 19,185, Change Guyana 105, PPP 3,164, PRP 45, TCJ 38, TNM 16, URP 17, sorry, URP 37. The total votes for ANOC in these elections, 2,253. No, this is the 10 region, including region four. This is including the, the SOPs we would have inputted from all of region four. We have 879 SOPs for Region 4, we have inputted those numbers. We have 739 tally sheets, and all of this would have been made public. Out of the 879 SOPs, 425 were verified up to when the process was stopped, and 454 remained to be verified. Based on that, based on the total numbers we would have tabulated, and as I said, nine of these districts are consistent with what was published by GCOM. ANOG had a total of 2,253 votes. APNU, 217,871. Change Guyana, 1,893. LJP, 2,054. PPP, 233,137. PRP 892, TCJ 671, TNM 246, URP 362. This will show you that the difference between the APNU and the PPP in these elections would have been 15,362 votes. So these are the numbers. Uh, our SOPs are published. Our tally sheets are published. And this is where we are. We want to we want to let our supporters know, uh, and all of Guyana know, because this is about all of Guyana now.
This democracy we have to protect, this freedom we have to protect, this will of the people that we have to protect, the rights of the people, the fundamental right of the people to vote and to have their vote counted and to have their votes respected is a right that all Guyanese and the world as a whole must protect. The, the world as a whole and we as Guyanese must protect these rights. They're fundamental and if we do not stand up for them, if we do not stand up, we'll be doing a great injustice to Guyana today and in the future. And as leaders of the People's Progressive Party Civic, we are going to stand up to ensure that the will of the people is heard, the will of the people is respected, and the will of the people is carried out in our country. So those are some of the remarks I would like to make here. Yes, I want to thank all of Guyana. Just one addition. Yes. Just one addition. Those figures that the presidential ca uh, candidate just called, our figure that we obtained from GCOM issue statement of poll, not our figures, GCOM issue statement of poll. All of these are from the statement right. of poll. So uh, this is where we are. We thank all of Guyana, all those who are on the right side, of, of, uh, of democracy, in the fight for democracy. All this, uh, the, the other parties who are standing up, uh, local international observers and commentators, uh, uh, other governments, who, uh, the CARICOM, who have all spoken out and who are all uh, very strong on this matter. We thank them and we want our supporters especially to know that we are very grateful for their support. Their support has ensured a People's Progressive Party civic victory, and that victory is a victory for all of Guyana because we have a plan and a program to implement for all of Guyana. Thank you very much, and we'll now invite questions from uh, the media. It was clear, the process was clear, it's described in the court document, it's described in the public domain, the SOPs were used, the statement of polls were used. And at what point and for what reason was the Well, we don't know for what reason, we can assume for what reason, but the last, up to the last communication we had with GCOM, which was with the CEO on the night we left, a printout of everything that... Uh, uh, that took place was done by the CEO, handed to all in the room, including the observers, and he said to us, we will resume at 9 a.m. the morning, it was already in the morning, we'll resume at 9 a.m. to continue the process of verification using the statement of polls. At 9, everyone turned up, and you know what, what took place. Nothing ever uh, happened after that. Right? A week ago. And the entire the entire press was was there. The press was there. The event. The observers were there. Uh, um, Neil, Neil Marx, you can provide her with all the tapes. You were there. I remember the Rara Waves was there. Um, but 15, 20 uh, um, reporters were on scene and they were uh, covering the events of the, as they were unfolding. So if if the young lady has some problem getting the information, you are please assist her. And these, and these recordings are all over social media. The decision that were made by Mr. Lowenfield that mm -hmm. will use statement of poll. That, yeah. was, that is on social media. Okay. All ne 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 any other question? Just stop for your hand, Mr. Lewis. Um, sir, your party, as well as all parties, agree that GCOM is the constitutional body that is responsible for declaring any results. Um, what we have just seen is a declaration by your party. Um, why is it that you would choose to do this now and not allow the process to be completed? <laughs> <laughs> to make the which you say yeah. in this, at this press conference, uh, you also uh, that um, you will respect. Okay, so let me say this first of all. We have shared the statement of poll for district number four a long time ago. All the statement of poll. The tally sheets oh, over a week now maybe. The tally sheet is already shared. GCOM has already declared the nine regions that I, uh, that I have just uh, shared the information. But we have already shared the information for region four. It has been, uh, it's coming up to almost two weeks. 
The information for Region 4 is, has already been shared. Our statement of poll that, that has been shared is there, it can be collated, and it's very important. This, it is very important that this information be made available to the public. It is already available. What I'm doing here is just summarizing. It is just summarizing of the information that is already out there. And it is critical. It is critical for democracy. What we should ask, what you should ask, is GCOM has a responsibility to work in the confines of the law, to work in the confines of uh, the, the representation of the People's Act, as Anil would have said. What is it? Why aren't they doing that? Why aren't they? Why, uh, why, uh, why did they not work in, 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 uh, in accordance with the court order that was issued? That uh, Anil would have uh, spoke, uh, spoken I about. Am May I remind you? I, I'm I asking could, again. I'm asking again. Let me help this is a good mm. generation. This is not, no, 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 no. This, I'm not, um, I'm sharing. You did say, you did say that it's results. a victory, right? It is. It is a victory. Well, Gcom is, let me, and let me the, and the orders by the Chief Justice said that Gcom is the constitutional body to declare official results. Yes. And the parties did agree that any declaration that will be made, right, will be accepted after GCOMs, GCOM made their declaration. You're making a declaration. Why oh, no. I, 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 let, let go, me, go, go, go. Um, if go I on, could, um, well, if we could recall, the Chief Justice said in her judgment that statements of poll that are posted at a conspicuous place outside of each polling place, as is required by law, is conclusive evidence of what happened inside the polling place during that day, except a recount happens. So without Dr. Ali sitting here and telling you what happened in Region 4, you know what happened in Region 4 because it is presumed that everybody will go, if you so desire, and check yourself for what conclusively happened in those polling places. May I also remind us about something? Prior to 1992, all the records will show you that one of the ways the elections were repeatedly rigged was that people would go into polling places, they would vote religiously, and then their votes would be placed in a box and taken off-site. Allegations that it used to be taken to Camp Ayangana. And when it got there, whatever people, those boxes were emptied and new votes were put in, put in there. So the will of the people was never given effect to. What we decided to do, all the parties agreed to do, so if we're talking about agreement with parties and it's now enshrined in our law, is that when we, people go to vote at a polling place, the votes will be counted right at that polling place, and the record of how people voted would be placed and recorded on something called a statement of poll. And that is why that statement of poll is a conclusive record of what happened inside the polling place. And that is why it is actually the only record of what exists, uh, that exists of what occurred in that polling place that day. Not by name, but in bulk, what the people of that polling place wanted. And it is the only document that can be sensibly, logically, and in law used to determine when we're doing a count on a tabulation. You can't use anything else. Importantly, it has to be used. Importantly, and and mm -hmm. so before, before I finish, so that is the importance of the statement to poll and the history of how it came about. And with the greatest of respect, your question presumes that GCOM is a place that is impartial and fair mm -hmm. and a good arbiter and referee between parties. That is a fallacious presumption, not because I said so, but because of what you have seen and what has unfolded between, before the eyes of this country and, and the, the eyes of the world. Mm -hmm. GCOM is not an, uh, impartial. GCOM is not being fair. 
GCOM seems to be part and parcel of this plan to take an election, not even rig an election, to take it and give it to one of the parties contesting the elections. So we can no longer, unfortunately, in 2020, we can no longer rely on GCOM in the same way that you're asking now for us to just wait on GCOM. We wish we, wish we could. We are simply saying we have presented here the conclusive evidence of what happened in that polling place, in those polling places, and we have tabulated them with a calculator for you. Importantly, importantly, statements of all are public documents. Exactly. Uh, that, that's the point. But before I finish, my, my, my friend, nobody else has come forward. Not a member of the public, not the APNU, not the AFC, not a combination of the two of them, nor anyone else. To say that the statements of poll that the PPP has published on its website for scrutiny, local and international, is incorrect. And here is what the correct one is. Nobody has said that. Absolutely. Nobody has come forward and said the one standing outside of the polling place is different from the PPP All zone. Right. So the, this is, we're in a different place now than we would have been when we signed before the election. Yeah. And so I don't think your question... Th that, that is the point is I'm fair. here to raise, is that the passion that the young man is exhibiting, that passion should be exhibited at the Guyana Elections Commission that has this country in a quandary. The point is, uh, you're supposing that statements of polls are private documents. Statements of polls are public documents. All we have attempted to do is to collate the public documents that we have. We have made no declaration. Secondly, is that before the 2nd of March, GCOM was a at a different place. Today, the 12th of March, GCOM is at a different place. So, the, the, you know, if you ask for balance, you have to be balanced, you have to be transparent. So if GCOM says to us, don't declare, don't speak to the matter, and what GCOM is doing, uh, how do you expect the other parties to be binded to that that, that? that is the mistake you're making here, my friend. And I, question I am answering. I am saying to I you. No, no, no. Let me answer. let me answer the question. It's, it's, it's presuming the your announcement and your declaration. No, we have made no declaration. We have These numbers are the numbers. <laughs> Mr. And I am saying. Mr. I, I am asking. Mr. Reporter. Let me, let me just. GCOM is the constitutional body, irrespective of what you may think of GCOM. What the world Even thinks the of GCOM. referred back everything to GCOM. Okay, no, I will ask this is not allowed to explain to you what constitutes a declaration. Sir, sir declaration, declaration, whilst it's an English word, it has, it's a term of art in law. Declaration for the purpose of election results has a legal connotation and process. Declaration of results, yes, it has to be done by GCOM, and nobody here is pretending to perform that function. GCOM has a process that the law prescribes, which must be followed, which culminates in the declaration of results. The nine regions have to be tabulated, along with Region 4, which has not yet been completed, sent, to the, sent by the respective returning officer to the chief elections officer. The chief election officer then takes all the 10 regions, tabulated results, and prepares a report and presents it to the commission. The commission has a checking mechanism to do to examine the authenticity and the accuracy of that report, and then makes a declaration in law in a form that is prescribed in law. In terms of votes cast, regions, seats allocated, respective political parties. So a member of the public or a particular political party reading out the results that that party accumulated at, at, a, at an election can never constitute a declaration of results? I mean, that's a very unfortunate question you're asking. And we have already spent a lot of time. 
Yeah. On that one question. Next question. Confine it Based on your understanding of the law in relation to declaration, whose job it is within those laws to utter the words these elections. I just said the je I just said the did the, the G come? I just said that. We, my presidential candidate, like every citizen of this country, has freedom of expression. He, he supports a party, and the party results he has disclosed. How can that be interpreted as a declaration for the purpose of the law? So, next so, question. So, 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 of course, of course, I, I vouch for it in the court. One hundred percent. I vouch for it on the corridor of the court. One hundred percent. And let me say this: there is the gold test. There is the gold standard. We are so confident in the figures that we are saying this publicly again that we are willing to go back to the boxes. We are willing to subject ourselves to the boxes. Let the boxes be open. Recount the boxes if you want. And we will abide by whatever results are in the boxes. Yep. I challenge you, I challenge I, you, my, my brother. I, I challenge, no, I challenge you to ask, I know. I challenge you to ask Apnu this. I challenge you to ask Apnu and Jikam this. Whether they're willing to go back to the boxes. We are willing now to go back to the boxes of District 4 or any other district. We are willing to go back to the boxes and let the boxes, which is the... The gold standard speak for itself and all of us. I'm telling you now that we will abide with whatever is in the boxes. These results are the results. Let us go to the boxes. And this is a challenge to all of Guyana in front of the world. Let us go to the boxes. We are ready to go to the boxes. Can the media help us to ask APNU AFC if they are ready to go to the boxes? Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, nine said, for the nine. Yes, I said that. He said that. Because basically, what I would have tallied from Jacob's website, the numbers don't match. Are you so looking at regional right? general? No, you have to look at general. Are you looking general at? I'm looking at general. Well, all the results that we yeah, have the here, the, the results that I have announced to you, are results that we can reconcile with what has been published in the newspaper the by Jacob, the official declaration by Jacob. General, general. This is general. I went through general, not regional. I have not dealt with regional. If perhaps we can turn our attention to the Region 4 now, can you give us an idea as to what happened with the requested recounting in Region 5 and 6? Zofia. Oh, what, what is it? The, the Region 5 recount, I understood that they started it and, it and they just aborted. I don't know what was the reason. Uh, if they have no, they didn't turn up. But they started it. I understood that they counted about seven or eight boxes and two or three votes more for the PPP were added to the PPP vote. And they said that they will put it on pause because they had protests. And I never knew what happened afterwards. But you can check with GCOM for that. Check with GCOM. Yeah. You can check with GCOM for that. Because we didn't make any, um, we did not make any requests for recount in those regions. So I think they we should ask them and they will state the reason. Check with GCOM. But as I said, <coughs> as I said, we are not afraid to go to the boxes. That is the gold standard. Our country is in a tense situation. If we are all. Uh, uh, patriots, why, 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 why don't we go to the boxes and let the boxes uh, demonstrate who is telling the truth and who is not telling the truth? Um, had Mr. Mingo said this morning that what he wanted to do was resume the tabulation or to restart it? He hasn't made that uh, announcement. He just came with a spreadsheet. Yeah, he said that he would go to spreadsheet. Remember, we were not in the room, right? Only uh, one, one. one person from each party was I, allowed in the room. Let me deal with this also. I see it being said that the court orders permit the returning officer to determine the modality he can use and in determining he can exclude use of the statement of poll. Look back at the court order. It doesn't say any such thing. The only power that the court order gives to the returning officer is to determine whether he will resume where he left off or he will begin it afresh. People are imbuing to the returning officer powers under the pretext 
that the court order gives him the power. And the court, and the court order never said any such you thing. You can get a court order on my Facebook page. We have copies of the court order. Just read it. Yeah. Read it. All right. Uh, just to this say this, sir. Mm-hmm. You are not concerned with the general use of spreadsheets. Just the Once we are satisfied that the spreadsheet contains information from the statements of Poland, we want to see that. In the presence. We want to of, see that happening. In the presence of the party. The, in the process, the SOP has to be used uh, so that we can do the in the presence of the party. But let us remember what the spreadsheet turned up. That is why we had objected to it. Out of 21 boxes that were done, 17, not one or two, 17 had serious errors that is and it, in Region 4. And it wasn't just errors with... Um, one or two. It was giving a hundred more to the APNU, seven to five more to the APNU. That was when they went to the spreadsheet. So and the errors them. were consistent yeah. where the APNU alone benefited from these huge That's number of votes. So we'll take two more questions. Uh, I have one more question. In presenting your collation of the results, yes. uh, are you asking the public to use your results as a verifier? All right. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this information with the public. I'm saying that we are willing to test. We are willing to test our results. We are confident in, in the numbers. We are willing to test it. And the test is in the boxes, the gold standard. Let us go to the boxes and, and let us see who's telling the truth. You can test that. You can go back to the boxes by requesting a recount. What we are doing is presenting your own results and asking the public. No, I'm presenting what is G-com's on the statement of polls. Nine has already been pronounced on by yeah, GCOM, officially. and the others is from the public document, which is the SOP. Yes. But, but just one addition, just one addition, but uh, those, those figures mm-hmm. are public knowledge. Yes. Those so figures were announced across the country on the right. polling stations. I understand that. Right? But what the Chief Justice said was that it is only GCOM statements of poll that the returning officers require to rely on. I'm not but sure these are the GCOM statements of poll. You have to read the same order. So the poll, the statements of poll. The same order. I don't. The statements of poll. The statement of poll emanates as pre everybody. Everybody from the the polling station. It is signed by the presiding officer, the deputy presiding officer, the clerk, the polling agents, observers. And it's posted outside for the public knowledge. It's carbon copy. The official one goes up on the, the building. The one is put in a sealed envelope for the CEO, two, another one for the RO, etc. And the agents, and the agents, agents. get copies sometimes, number seven, eight, ten, or eleven, depending how many agents are there. That we're all emanating from one mother. This is not that we create a document, you create a document. It's all from one, the numbers are on the statements of poll, etc. That is what we're calling the statements of poll. The, the, the Chief Justice talks about returning to the statements of poll. The discretion she gave, as Anna said, is to decide whether to continue or to restart. But there's no question about returning to the statements of poll as the, the primary document from which the tabulation will emanate. That's what she's talking about. And furthermore, the nine that have been officially declared have not been the subject of our court order whatsoever. She declared that the Region 4 declaration was null and void. Yes. She determined that the official declaration by the Chief Elections Officer of the results of 10 regions was null and void. She didn't nullify the nine official results that are already declared. No, just four, just four. Just region 4. Just District region 4. 4. Just District 4. So, I mean, we have to yeah, be clear yeah. with language. The, the, can I go? Let's go. go. Anything new? A new question? Why then? Because the statement of poll in possession of GCOM and in possession of the PPP and APNU ought to be identical because they are carbon copy. And, and we are saying even if the, we are not, we are not asking our, our, the one in our possession to be used as a barometer. We are asking the RO to bring his own. To present his own. He's not bringing his own, he's bringing a spreadsheet. I don't understand why this thing is so unclear. The order doesn't even talk about GCOM statement of poll. It, it doesn't the say that. The statement of poll. It's supposed to be one. Because it's assumed to be one. 
But uh, so she is probably the only that. authority to, uh, to, to give out statements of course. So all those statements all right, of course so came from she probably. My point is it's not a verification process. As in, he doesn't have to ask the PPP, what are your statements of course? No, you read them up? No, he got to say box number 13. And everybody pick up their statement of poll for box number 13 because it should be identical. Because they are carbon copy of each other. You know what carbon copy means? Yes. You put it plain paper, you put the carbon in the bottom, you write on the plain paper and it prints through. So when you take it up, you get identical carbon. imprints on everything. So there can be differences. Right. So let's go to the young lady. That, no, 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 sir, please. Let's go to the young lady. She's been trying a long time. There, there was a meeting brokered by the heads of state of CARICOM and at that meeting the president and the leader of the opposition attended and perhaps I should just say it, undertakings were extracted from both sides, both sides were required to give certain undertakings. The president committed that he will instruct his commissioners at GCOM to ensure that there is the highest form of transparency at the exercise in compliance with the Chief Justice order because it was, all, it, all, it was known that the RO would begin to comply with the Chief Justice order this morning and directly the President was asked and he said that his he will instruct his commissioners to ensure that the Chief Justice order is complied with, that Section 84 in particular is complied with, in the most, po in the most transparent possible way, so that all the parties are going to be present and they will oversee and oversight the process, so that confidence can be restored in the process and that fairness will permeate the process and it will be done in the presence of the parties and the obser uh, observer teams. That is the commitment that the president gave to that meeting. Yeah, yeah, yes. um, it's been reported that you will resume um, tomorrow morning at night. Um, what? That we will resume? The no, GCO will resume tomorrow oh. at night. Are you aware of this one and what process are you most comfortable in heading into that process? It, it, sir, it is not what we are comfortable with. It is what Section 84 of the Representation of the People's Act prescribes and buttressed by an order of court, which is that there must be an ascertainment and adding up of the votes cast in, in respect of each list of candidates using the statements of poll as a basis in the presence of the parties who are qualified to be there in law. Okay, so we'll it's as one, simple as that. We'll take one more question now, uh, Mr. Raymond. Um, have GCOM given you a copy of this spreadsheet that they are using and have they said where these numbers came from? No, GCOM has not given us and GCOM will not give us because that spreadsheet is corrupt. It's perverted. It doesn't reflect the will of the people cast in the ballot boxes of the electoral district number four. And that is the, 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 the crux of the matter. We will t I'll take two more, the young, young lady and Neil Marks. Please go ahead. Well, then you have to go to the boxes. And that was what we made clear last night with the CARICOM officials too, that the gold standard is the boxes. If there are major differences, then you have to go to the boxes. That is the gold standard. Yeah. Our, our position is simple, three, three, three things. One, we must secure all the containers with the ballot boxes for Region 4, secure them. Centralized location. In a centralized location. Two, we must comply with Section 84 as ordered by the Chief Justice. The Chief Justice didn't have to order that. We had to comply with that in any event because it's the laws of Guyana. Three, any dispute arising out of that process must be 
was sent us to the box for a count of the ballots in the box to resolve that dispute. It's as simple as, as provided for by the law, by Section 83, 84.3 uh, of the Act. Mr. Neil Marks. I'm very sorry to label the point, but I think what Tandy was trying to get from you, we weren't in the returning office for the tabulation of the 421 statements of poll. Statements of poll by statement of poll. This, they hold up it like this. The one on a screen. A number. We had a big screen. So the statements of poll come up on the screen. The numbers are called, the number of votes to be cast in the box, uh, to vote at that station is called, the number of votes cast is called, and the parties, and how much each party received, and the total. And let me say this. And that goes on the spreadsheet. And that yes, goes on, and that, we, we, we take that down. Let me say this though, Mr. Marks, just to add to that. In those that would have already been verified, we had no problems. With the statement of poll. With the statement of poll. None. Yes, yeah, that were verified. They, yes. they were verified using all 421 were verified using the statement of yeah. poll in But our suddenly presence. when they stopped. And Neil Marks, that is why they had to stop. Had they concluded that process, it would have revealed the statistics that their fan disclosed, and, and which would have shown the PVP yeah, waiting by 15,000. Yeah, just uh, one thing, Mr. Nana, I don't know if it's fair or not given how things have moved fast, uh, but what happens if the timeline for the declaration of well, we will deal with that. Certainly, yes, it can't yes. mean that the election results can't be disclosed, can't be declared uh, forever, and it, and, and, and it cannot mean that this government will remain in power. Certainly, the law will not facilitate that. That's where the directory and, and mandatory yes, argument yes, will come in again. Mr. Marks, that is, as we raised that is at this press conference, that there is a, a time constraint. Uh, the, the uh, analyzing the consequences of that is the next next phase, and you'll be kept abreast. Let me let me thank you all of you for the time you're spending on this. I've seen many of the faces out there, uh, early in the morning and late in the evening. I think the media has a very important role to play, and uh, uh, our wish is that that role be in the national interest and in the interest of preserving our democracy, our freedom, and our rights. Thank you very much, and we will keep you engaged. Thank you. Thank you very much.